Hi, I'm Lucas Rogers, and I'd like to welcome you along today to the Rogers Property Group. You know, I consistently receive emails from clients and, and various people around the country on how do we improve our cash flow from property? Well, I'm gonna answer that question in two separate parts. First of all, I'm gonna answer that question in a pre-purchase way. So how can I select a property that's gonna maximize my cash flows? And then also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about it post-purchase. So if I've got a property that's five or six years old, very, very hard to improve my cash flow from that. But I'm gonna give you a strategy which I think you'll really, really like that can improve your cash flow significantly. Okay, so pre-purchase. There are three really important things that you need to remember for cash flow for property. The first thing is, is one, rent. Okay? Never buy a property unless it's going to give you some type of rent, okay? And I'm not talking about five or six years in the future, I'm talking about in the next few months. So if you're buying a block of land, you need to have plans to be building a house on it ASAP. There's no point in going out and buying a block of land somewhere in the middle of nowhere on the hope that eventually in the future you may be able to develop that block of land. There's a few problems with that. Problem number one is it's not creating any income. Okay, so I'm not getting any rent off that. So therefore the thing is just costing me money to hold. Okay, so that's a bad thing. The second thing is, is if my asset is not creating income, so it's not giving me any rent, I'm not entitled to tax deductions, okay? So that's the second thing that we need to look at, is our tax deductions. You need to be maximizing your tax deductions from your property to maximize your cash flow. And what's the best type of tax deduction we can get from a property? That's right, it's depreciation. Depreciation is such an important part of investing in property if your strategy is to buy and hold for the long term. And it has a massive, massive impact on your cash flows. Now depreciation works um, the sa on property as the same as it would say a, a car or, or a computer, whatever it may be. It diminishes in value over time, okay? Um, but it obviously works on a much grander scale when it comes to property. And I'm gonna give you a quick example of how that works. Okay, so let's say I've got a property here. And this particular property costs me $190,000 to build. Okay? Now that doesn't include the land, that's just the house part, because unfortunately we can't depreciate the land. Now my house is made up of two different parts. And the first part is the structure. So that's the, the plumbing, the walls, the roof, and all that sort of thing, okay? And we'll say that that makes up $160,000. So that's $160,000 in the structure. The second part of my house is my fixtures and fittings. Carpets, curtains, dishwasher, light shades, oven, aircon. And we'll say that that part makes up $30,000. Now the government allows us to write these two parts of the asset back to zero over a period of time. How long do we get for the structure of the house? Well, it's 40 years. So if I divide my structure by 40, that means I'm entitled to $4,000 per year there for the next 40 years, okay? Now, my fixtures and fittings, they wear out a lot quicker and there's various methods that we can use to write those off. But let's say, for instance, that they were, um, uh, let's say, generally speaking, what we say is uh, that we write them off in about five years. So if we divide our 30 by five, that gives us $6,000 a year there. So you can see from our depreciation alone that we're getting a $10,000 per year tax deduction. And why depreciation is so important is it actually costs us nothing, okay? We're not outlaying anything for this $10,000 deduction. It's a non-cash deduction, and that's why it's so powerful. So if I'm a lucky person, I'm on 50 cents in the dollar as a tax rate, then I'm entitled to $5,000 a year back from my depreciation alone, and that's $100 a week towards keeping the cost of my property down. And this is why depreciation is so important. And this is a great example because what it does is it highlights how ineffective old properties are. People get out there and they buy an old property because they think that they're gonna get a bargain, but they're misled. Let's look at, the, let's look at something that's 
you know, purchase say 10 years old, um, you know, purchase something 10 years old, it's still gonna look good and it's still gonna rent out reasonably well, but let's have a look at the deductions that you miss out on. First of all, it's important to remember, if you buy a second hand property these days, the legislation has changed and you're no longer allowed to deduct the fixtures and fittings. Even if it's two months old, you're no longer allowed to deduct it. So if it's 10 years old, you're obviously not allowed to do it. So you've missed out on $30,000 there. Secondly, you've missed out on 10 years of the structure because remember we're comparing a new house to one that's 10 years old. So you've missed out on $40,000 there. So you've missed out on $70,000 worth of depreciation just because you went and bought something that's 10 years old. This is why I say to my clients, if you want to maximize your um, cash flow from your property, then think prior to buying it, what type of asset you're going to buy. And it has to be a new house because new houses will rent better. They'll give you better tax deductions in the name of depreciation. And what's something else you want to keep as low as possible? That is your maintenance, okay? I've got a range of different properties myself personally in my portfolio. I've got new property and I've got old property. If I could wipe my portfolio clean of all my old properties, I would because they're a pain. There's always issues with them. The tree roots are growing into the drains. There's possums nesting in the roof because they're old and they're climbing through. It's just a nightmare. There's always maintenance issues. So I encourage you, if your strategy is to buy and hold property and you want to maximize your cash flows, then buy brand new because you're going to maximize your rent maximize your tax deductions in the form of depreciation and you're going to keep your maintenance as low as possible. So that's pre-purchase, okay? So that's an important thing to look at. So now I've spoken about pre-purchase and how to maximize your cash flows by buying new. But you can only do that thinking about that prior to purchasing. So now how do we increase our cash flows from a property that's you know, we've maybe owned for five or six years or however long we've owned it for. What other strategies can we look at? Well, there's a key one that I've come across recently that increases your cash flows dramatically with not a huge outlay, and that is solar. Solar is a fantastic investment and can really give amazing returns. And I'm talking about returns starting at a 20% return on investment and going upwards from there. Okay, so post is Solar. How does solar work? Well, there's a number of different um, income streams that we can get from solar, but don't think that you can just race out there and put a solar system on your house and start charging the, the, the tenants for that. It's not the way it works. You have to be very, very careful about it. And in fact, I investigated solar in depth and I wondered why, because the returns are so good, why hadn't any landlords put them on their homes, or not on their homes, but on their investment properties? And the reason being is it's the billing process. So there's a couple of income streams when it comes from solar. One is the feed-in tariffs. You have to excuse my writing, it's not real flash. Probably all my spelling. Feed-in tariffs. And the second thing is, is charging the solar to the client. So solar charge to tenant. Okay. Now, in the past, you haven't been able to, to get back the feed-in tariffs. So what happens with solar is that um, when it creates, obviously, electricity that the tenants use, which you can charge them for, okay, and then it also creates electricity which gets fed back into the grid, which people in, in the greater community can use. And what happens is the electricity companies pay you for that. Now, what, why it hasn't worked in the past is you haven't been able to claim both of these things because if the tenant puts the power bill into their name, then you're not entitled to get the feed-in tariffs. But what we've done is we've managed to get around that by using a specialized and unique to the Rogers Property Group billing process. So what it can do is it allows you to get not only get the feed-in tariffs back from the, um, from the 
power company, but it also allows you to charge the tenants for the electricity that they're using. Now let me tell you, the returns on this are amazing. They really are. It's a 20% return on investment, and what happens is, is the charge that you, go, that you get from the tenant, that actually goes up with the price of electricity. And let me tell you, the price of electricity over the last 10 years has been going up of an average of about eight to 10%. So you've got an investment here that in the returns are increasing by eight to 10% per annum because your electricity charge that you're getting from the tenants is pegged against the electricity that you're getting from the grid. So it's something worth definitely investigating and it can increase your rents, um, well let's call it rent, it goes your cash flow from about $30 to start off with and then, it, and then the sky's the limit from there. So I encourage you to check that out. But as I said, it's not just a case of putting solar panels and an inverter on your roof, um, because if you do that and then try and charge the tenant back to the electricity, you'll run into all sorts of problems. You can only do it the way we do it with a specialized third party billing process, which is unique to the Rogers Property Group. So guys, look, there's a couple of great tips for you on how to um, pre-selection of your property, how to maximize your cash flow, so looking at your rent, maximizing your tax deductions in the form of depreciation and minimizing your maintenance, so buying new. And if you've got a property now that you've owned for a few years, which you would like to improve the cash flow on that, then investigate solar through the Rogers Property Group, and I'm sure you'll find it a fantastic investment. Thanks very much.